That's a nice cup of coffee. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Halifax. The only beautiful day this week. It's Wednesday. No, it's not. It's Tuesday, the 12th day of February. We had rain the last couple of days and warm temperatures, 11 degrees Celsius in Halifax yesterday. Incredible. Then it dropped down to minus eight overnight. So it's about minus eight right now, maybe minus seven. Beautiful sun, no clouds. <laughs> Wind chill of minus 25. So it's not often I dig out one of my uh, trapper hats, but uh, sitting near the lake today, I figured I probably needed it. I came out today for a very special reason. I wanted to get out and make sure I got a chance to enjoy the good weather this week because it's going to start raining again tomorrow. But also just to give you an update. So many of you will recall, and for those of you who don't, in August of 2017, I underwent surgery, major abdominal surgery for colon cancer. And I recovered from the surgery actually quite well and quite quickly. And I attribute that a lot to my pre-existing health and my fitness that I had uh, put a lot of time and invested in over the years. So the cancer was removed, or at least the tumors were removed. It was stage three cancer. But then a few months ago, I, I started with the chemotherapy. And I have a few videos where I talk about some of the side effects of the chemotherapy. And minor as they were, they were annoying, but still nothing that was going to keep me out of the woods. It's still nothing that's going to keep me out of the woods, but it does make it a little bit more challenging. And I'll tell you now that the, the side effects are cumulative. And as the weeks go on, I'm finding that they have more of, more of an effect on me. I still have problems with the skin on my fingers and the bottom of my feet coming off. Annoying, but that's not a big deal. I still have issues with how it's affecting my digestion, and I still carry modium with me because you just never know when it's going to strike sometimes. But the most recent side effects that are making it a little bit more difficult for me is what I just learned the term for is chemo fog. So what that does is a couple of things. I haven't had so much problem with this, but it makes it more difficult to focus on anything for any length of time. Uh, I, the doctors were saying that I likely would find that I'm reading a book and then I'll stop and have to look at it and say, what did I just read and have to start again, or I just won't be able to pick up a book at all. Um, that's not too bad right now because I'm, I'm forcing myself to concentrate and, and, and use my mind as much as possible. It also has a, an effect on me in terms of my stamina. So I can get out during the day for a little while, I can get a lot done, but by supper time, I, I'm, I'm done for. I, I, that's it for the rest of the evening. That makes overnights in the woods during the winter pretty much an impossibility. Much as I wanted to get out this winter, it doesn't look like it's going to, be, it's going to happen. It also gives me a bit of a lightheaded feeling as well. Nothing serious, nothing make me dizzy, nothing to stop me from driving a car or doing anything. Just that little bit of a lightheaded, maybe a little bit of a weak feeling. Again, annoying more than anything else. I'm also finding that I'm minding the cold more than I did this time last year. And it was colder last year. It's just that the, the chemo is dra dragging on my reserves, my physical reserves. So I, I tell you that for a reason, and that is because you may not see me in the woods as much this winter as you did last winter. I hope to get out on good days, even if it's just for the day. Overnights, I'm not too sure about. But I will get out every chance that I get and bring material to you and, and, and have you share with me my, my joy of being in the woods. Oh, I've got something. Speaking of sharing. There is a knife maker in Halifax, relatively new knife maker. If I can find the other knife. There it is. And his company name is Grind Hose, Grind House Knife Care and Wear. And I'll put the link below. And I met up with him over Christmas. He was doing some of the craft shows and he had some of his knives displayed. And uh, we talked and he said, come see me after Christmas. And he gave me two knives to play with. And I thought I'd just introduce him. This is not a review, just an introduction of two of the knives from his lineup. And you can go to see more information if you're interested at, at, on his website. And I'll post that below, as I said. And hopefully at another time, I'll be able to get out and do some more with that. I'm playing with them, doing some little cutting and little chores with them. Uh, you saw me cutting up my egg for my, my soup, which I'll tell you about in a second. But here are the knives. Now, they're not big knives. This one is referred to as the hedgehog. 
So he's named this after the hedgehog mushroom, and it's quite a pointed, very, I actually quite like the blade shape, but it's a small knife, and it, and it uh, well, hopefully you can see, it, uh, it just disappears in my hand, which is okay for a small crafty knife. I don't think it's quite large enough for a full bushcraft knife, but I do like the shape of the knife. He certainly seems to know his steel because when I put an edge on this, it didn't come especially sharp, but they were display models. Uh, I put an edge on this and it's maintained its edge very well so far. Little leather sheath to go with it. And the other one he wanted me to take with him, take with me, is known as the Chaga. <laughs> and he developed this specifically, well, with the idea in mind that you could harvest Chaga with it. So he said this is a tough workhorse of a knife and it looks like it too. It's a, almost a full flat grind, a high saber grind, very fine secondary edge on it, and a, quite, a, quite a deep belly on it. And he said, bash them around. Try your hardest to break them. Well, I can't do that. It's just not in me to do that. But I will put them through their paces and see how well they stand up to edge wear on wood and normal chores. And if this has been designed for digging chaga out of a tree, if I happen to find any, I'll give it a go and see if I can't record that as well. So that's just a little bonus today. Well, lunch today, if you're interested, it was meant to be a quick lunch, and that's all it really was, was a, it, an egg noodle, similar to a ramen noodle, but an egg noodle, packed like a little nest, a miso soup base, a few pieces of uh, jerky, I think they were pork jerky in this case, and uh, a hard-boiled egg. And all together, they, they rehydrated very well and, you know, made just a nice quick lunch on the trail. And of course, coffee. And this is coffee that my son and his fiance, they were in Mexico over Christmas and they brought me back some Mexican coffee. And it's not known to be a dark, rich roast, but the way I did it with the French, or not the French press, the uh, AeroPress. Oh man, that brings out the most of the coffee. That's nice, that's very nice to have on a nice sunny day like this. The other thing you might have seen, and this is just a preview again, is a brand new, Solo stove. So that's the solo, the standard solo stove and pot, the solo light, I guess they call it. I had done some work for a friend of mine, um, Fred Stillman, the owner of K Tuck Expeditions. Actually, right in the area that I'm in right now, we ran a wilderness uh, survival or a winter survival course workshop, one day workshop. And rather than take money from him, uh, he bought this as a gift for me and it just added to my collection. So I have the, the larger Titan stove, but this is a small stove, which is great just for what I used it for today, just to come prepare a quick lunch. I used wood pellets in it today because it rained yesterday and it dropped to minus eight overnight. I doubted I was gonna find any dry wood without having to do a whole lot of splitting out. And that's kind of defeats the purpose of the solo stove. I should be able to just pick up little sticks. So I used wood pellets. They didn't last the whole time I needed them to, so I did um, augment that with a few little sticks that I was able to break off of some of the, the, the uh, spruce trees here. But folks, I just want to close up with this. In my original video where I talked about my cancer, I had made that video to prompt people to get tested. I had said that I was symptomless, and I was, no symptoms at all. I wasn't in a high risk category, I had no family history, I ate well, and I had a, a quite a, a strong fitness regime. I considered myself low risk for getting cancer, colon cancer anyway, and it turned out I had it. That means if I can get it, you can get it. So really what I want you to do is I want you to get out and get tested. If you have the FIT test, F-I-T test, as issued by the Canadian Cancer Society here in Canada, and it's been issued to you and it goes to everybody over the age of 50, and if you haven't done it, do it. Just do it. Do it and send it in. It might save your life. It saved mine. If you don't have the fit test where you are, go to your doctor and talk about colon cancer testing, whether it's a colonoscopy or a simple stool sample test. It could save your life. Really, it could. So that's how I want to end this video, is just encouraging you to get tested for colon cancer. Stay patient with me. I'll be back in the woods before too long. I'm about halfway through my chemo. It's probably going to get a little rougher, but it's not going to keep me out of the woods, at least hopefully not keep me out of the woods altogether. But until you see me in the woods again, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.